Hello, Lions fans, and welcome to another edition of the Lions Den podcast. I'm Adam Williams. Sitting beside me today is our head softball coach, Christine Roser. Coach, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Uh, so, as of recording, we're just a little over the one-year hire date. <laughs> Pretty uneventful, right? I mean, it's been super boring. <laughs> I can only imagine. Um, yeah, no, I was just talking with somebody the other day. I was like, oh, wow, it's been a year. Time's flown by, but yeah. So uh, a year goes by, but let's let's kind of back up before we talk about some of the Mars Hill days here. Let's talk about your, your playing career at Rollins College. Uh, again, decent little career you had there. <laughs> uh, quite uh, a number of accolades. Uh, catcher of the year. First team all-conference all four years. Freshman of the year. Uh, numerous All-American awards. Um, kind of even going before that, what was growing up, what made softball your sport of choice? Um, to be honest, it's funny. Like, a lot of my friends that were really good at their sport were just so athletic. You know, that was the thing. Like, I'm athletic. I can play all sports. For me, I got into softball. I was your typical, like, terrible kid in right field picking weeds. Like, it wasn't, you know, <laughs> but it was fun. And, like, the people I was around were older and they were good. So I was like, I want to be like them. So I would, like, force my mom to take me to the field every day and just get better and practice. And um, I wasn't good at other sports. Like, I would play volleyball and basketball for fun. But softball just was always fun but competitive. And I knew that, you know, I had a passion for it. And kind of going into college, I was like – thinking post-college life, you know, what would I want to do job-wise, all this, and I was like, I can't imagine my life without softball in it, so it worked out. <laughs> so we talked post-college life, and the passion for softball leads you into coaching. Uh, first role at Seminole State College as an assistant, uh, correct? So before that, yeah, I was a GA, grad assistant at the University of West Alabama. Okay. I was there for a year and a half, and then, yeah, I went to Seminole State, the JUCO powerhouse with Courtney Miller, who's there, so... That was fun. It's it's really fun being an assistant underneath some phenomenal coaches. And that was kind of the path that I took. It was like, I know I want to get underneath people that I can learn from so that when I do become a head coach, I'm not just going into it blindly. And because I was good in college, then it would translate as a coach. That's not always the case. So I was super lucky to be under her. And then when I was at Queens um, with Stacey Schramm, she helped out a lot and was a, is a great mentor and friend still to this day. So... It was. I was lucky to kind of coach under those amazing people. I was just going to bring up your tenure at Queen. So obviously familiar with the sack, four years with the Royals. At what point did you decide, like, I think I'm ready to finally tackle a head coaching role? Was it at fourth year or was that kind of brewing throughout that tenure? I think I knew, like, getting into coaching, I always knew the end goal would be I want to, you know, be a head coach. I, I would enjoy that. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of just the natural progression uh, we were there for three years, four years, and developed the team. You know, they went from not being very good to going to regionals and, you know, having 50 game winning seats. You know, so it was kind of the next progression. The next step was who's going to take a chance on me and hire somebody with no head coaching experience. And thankfully, you know, Rick Baker and Monica took that chance. So. Say and and we we kind of joked at the offset here the the uneventful year yeah. but let's let's talk about it. You have that fall. You're preparing the team. Mm -hmm. You're getting the season going. You're just about to start conference play, and then all of a sudden, basically the world shuts down. For uh, sure. So, I I mean it's jarring for everyone. But let's talk about kind of the unfortunate circumstance for for all spring coaches, but for for you in particular, kind of letting your players know like, hey, uh, we had a good run, but unfortunately, it's cut way shorter. Than it should be. Well, and it was, yeah, it was just unfortunate because we were really in a building year for the program. You know, new head coach, new assistant coach, a ton of seniors had graduated the year before. So it was really a building year for them, regardless of, you know, who was at the helm and all that. But we really didn't ever get to kind of get our footing and really like build off of that. You know, I felt like we were getting better every week. We were really making progress. We sent them home for a couple days for spring break, and then they actually came back, and we were like, okay, just kidding. You have to go back home. <laughs> the world is ending, you know. <laughs> like, So, it, yeah, it was disappointing. Um, again, there's bigger things going on in the world than softball being canceled, but at the same time, uh, that was the world for those seniors that we had and the girls. I mean, they're in college. You know, they're college athletes. So it was a big blow. It was very upsetting. Um but hopefully, you know, hopefully this year we'll get to get back out there and pick up where we left off. And 
you mentioned new assistant coach Scott Long, and we talked about those seniors. Well, one senior who had her season cut short, unfortunately, was Emily Burris. However, she is returning as a volunteer assistant. So let's let's talk about the coaching staff first. How you brought Coach Long on, and then kind of the, the progression to to keep Emily around for at least one more year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Coach Long and myself actually go way back. Um, he was the head coach at Salem College for. I want to say probably eight years, uh, and I met him at a camp one year, and we just hit it off. Our philosophies were very similar, you know, our personalities, everything really meshed. So throughout the years, we've always just kind of kept in touch. We've hung out, we've talked softball, and then when I got this opportunity, I knew the first person I was going to call was going to be him, and it just kind of lined up. He had just left another uh, assistant position at Gardner-Webb, and... It, I mean, the stars aligned. It was I was very, very lucky to be able to get somebody like Coach Long in who's had head coaching experience, who's done, I mean, has been very successful. So it was definitely a blessing. Um, and then with Burr, she graduated and was, like, kind of just, like, I don't really know. You know, with COVID, nobody's really hiring. I don't really know. Um, so I asked her, I was like, you know, would you want to stay on? Would you want to help us out this year and she was like absolutely I mean she's living local so it just worked out perfectly again stars aligned so I was lucky with both of them and say I mean amid all kind of the chaos like you said everything's kind of aligned for that future yeah and as as we talk about building for the future uh you and I talked briefly right before we went on air here 15 Mm -hmm. new players coming in this year uh talk about kind of your recruiting philosophy and and when you knew like hey we have to hit the ground running in terms of recruiting and and kind of what you believe the importance of it is in in terms of how you approach it yeah I mean we just approach it you know we want to recruit better every year so my 21s are going to be better than the 20s the 22s are going to be better than 21 you know so we want to always get kids in here that are going to make the program better and better every year um like we said I got hired in August and I think by the second week in September, we were having kids on campus for tryouts and visits and camps. And I mean, we went a little crazy, but we knew that we had to have solid kids coming in. We wanted depth, you know, that's something that we lacked a little bit this year. So we wanted to make sure that that wasn't an issue this upcoming year. So it, it's funny because I'm, I'm pretty close with our compliance assistant. It was every day he's like, softball's got two kids, <laughs> softball's got five kids, softball's got ten kids. And yeah. it just kept building and building. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it's uh, it's a lot like, of work for everyone else here. I feel <laughs> bad, but I was like, hey, i, I got to get these kids said, in. you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. you got to build this program. Yeah. So uh, we bring in the, the freshman link we mentioned. Hopefully we'll be able to, to play some games and get through this <laughs> season and and uh, not have a repeat of, of earlier this year, yeah. of course. But um, – you know, talking about earlier this year, we, you said how we were, how the team's getting better and better every week. What were some of the strides that you that you saw either on or off the field? And then what were some things that you noticed, like, we definitely need to continue working on that? Yeah, I mean, pitching was definitely a weakness of ours. We didn't have the depth on, like, in the mound, on the circle, in the circle on the mound. Um, so that was something that, although we got better at, it was always going to be kind of our Achilles heel the whole year. So aside from that, I mean, our team chemistry and the buy-in from the girls with the new culture was just phenomenal. I mean, it was almost immediate and it started to show in the spring. Uh, They definitely, you know, went through some obstacles and had to overcome a lot when it came to just getting our tails whipped sometimes, you know, we got beat pretty bad, but they never gave up, you know, they, it would be inning seven and they would still be fighting even though we were down by six or seven or whatever it might be. So The heart from the team really was amazing. Um, The softball IQ part was what I kind of saw that got better every week. The girls were just getting better and better, and that was going to eventually, hopefully, lead to either closer ball games or, you know, winning some. So, So, Coach, as we wrap up here, you mentioned culture. In in your mind, what is the culture that both you and Coach Long want to establish? Like, what is the main mission for this program? Yeah, so for us... Uh, family is very important to us out, you know, our families matter a lot. So we want to treat our team as if it is a family. So these girls coming in are going to know that we care about them. They're going to care about each other, um, every year. And again, this is year two on it. We kind of are going to establish that mission statement and all that with the team and let the girls kind of take ownership of it so that it means a little bit more to them and they can work harder at it. 
So for us, a big one is the family, the family environment. And I think that's uh, certainly a common thread throughout Mars Hill Athletics oh, yeah. here. But, um, Coach, I do appreciate you taking the time and doing this podcast. Lions fans, if you do want to follow everything going on with the softball program or every program here with Mars Hill, be sure to check out the official Mars Hill Athletic website, marshilllions.com. Uh, for specific social media pages, if you go to the website, under the Fan Zone tab, there is a link, uh, hashtag MHU Lions on social media, and you'll be able to interact with a PDF there that'll take you to your respective team's social media pages. Uh, keep up to date, and obviously, Coach, we're hoping to see the team out here uh, on the field in 2021, and we want all the fans to come to Ponder, and if you're unable to, be sure to check out all of our live streams of the games as well. It's a lot of plugs, but we got through them, Yeah, Coach. absolutely. Thank uh, you so much. Once again, thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, you too.